Yes, as I has introduced, um, we are engineers for Airbnb, and the, today we are very excited to talk about how we migrate Airbnb onto Istio. Um, so, first of all, um, here's the agenda for today. Um, we will first start with a brief introduction, and then Edie and I will focus on our uh, migration strategies. And at the end, we will have a quick recap and a Q&A session. So let's first have a very high level overview on how um, on the Airbnb service mesh journey. So starting from uh, 2013, Airbnb has been using a service discovery system called the Smart Stack that we open sourced. On a very high level, Smart Stack uses uh, Zookeeper as the service registry and relies on a bunch of sidecars. In 2019, we finally uh, decided to stop patching our um, Smart Stack and started to search for a modern service mesh solution. And uh, after some evaluations, we uh, quickly landed on Istio as the foundation. And internally, we use uh, Air Mesh as the name for our uh, next generation service mesh. And we will use this term uh, throughout the presentation. And if you're interested in finding out more about why we ended up, ended up choosing Istio, feel free to check out um, the Istio.com talk earlier this year. And as of today, we have migrated um, almost all the Kubernetes services um, onto Istio and migrated about uh, half of uh, inter-service um, product, production traffic onto Istio. And uh, our plan is to uh, fully migrate to Istio in next year and uh, sunset our legacy uh, system. Yeah, so that's um, the introduction. And uh, now uh, in this section, uh, we have summarized some of our strategies for approaching um, the migration. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to talk a little bit more about uh, user-friendly. So uh, Istio custom resources are pretty complex and uh, a lot of the features are um, not very useful for our um, product engineers actually. And the uh, Istio API is also evolving. Um, it will be messy and dangerous if our user need to handle upgrading those APIs by themselves. So instead of asking them to learn and manage those uh, custom resources. We believe providing a simplified and opinionated uh, user-friendly API for our mesh users uh, is critical. So as a result, um, our mesh users do not directly uh, interact with uh, Istio custom resources. We provide a, a simple config file that uh, our user uh, use. Uh, for example, here I show the mesh config file for the service banana. Um, and service owners checking this mesh config file alongside their service code after code review. And during CI time, we generate the Istio custom resources from this config file. And the generated uh, Istio resources are managed by our deployment system and all the config changes are made by a deploy, which is monitored and it can be easily rolled back. <laughs> and we provide several uh, different mesh objects in our mesh API. We provide app, which uh, is workload that only have outgoing traffic. And we also provide service, which is uh, basically app with ports. And then VM app and the VM service is the EC2 version of app and service. And external is used for defining external services into the mesh, like our MySQL databases on AWS. And then we also have virtual service, which allows user to um, control routing to a set of those uh, real services. And we also allow extension and override between mesh objects. For example, uh, in this example, banana canary and banana canary baseline both extend uh, production. So they get the same uh, config as uh, production. And this uh, help us to reduce the verbosity of the mesh config file. Yeah, um, so I want to talk a little bit more about virtual service that we provide. 
So um, the most straightforward use case um, of the virtual service is uh, for static canary. Um, with, uh, with static canary at Airbnb, we um, at all time uh, route a certain percentage, for example, 10% of traffic to canary and the rest to uh, production. And then new changes are always deployed to canary first to verify before proceed to production. And to achieve this uh, kind of traffic routing, user can just uh, simply define uh, this virtual service in their mesh uh, config. And a little bit more complex than um, static canary is uh, ACA, which means uh, automated canary analysis. And uh, a lot of our Airbnb uh, services have adopted this. And for ACA, um, during non-deployment time, all the traffic goes to production. But uh, during deployment time, we uh, scale up the canary and canary baseline pods. And then we route a certain percentage of traffic to them to do a side-by-side -side comparison. And after we verify um, the metrics and everything looks good, we uh, restore the traffic back and uh, scale down the canary and canary baseline. And then we deploy the change to uh, production. So um, this requires that we uh, modify traffic routing dynamically during um, the deployment time. And here's how we achieve this. Um, in the deployment config, uh, as the top left, user um, will define um, the mesh object keys and the percentage they want in their ACA um, deploy stage. And uh, based on the user input, our tooling will um, generate the Istio uh, customer resource, which is a virtual service and uh, deploy it during the apply uh, traffic routing stage. And then after ACA, um, our tooling will also generate the resource to restore back the traffic. So um, this whole process is um, completely hidden away from user. All they need to configure uh, is the deployment config uh, on the top left side. Yeah, um, so besides making sure that uh, Mesh API is user-friendly, we also, um, another top priority for us is uh, safety. So um, every day there are hundreds and hundreds of changes going on. And we don't want to stop the buses to do the migration. Instead, we want to uh, seamlessly migrate while keeping the process safe at the same time. So in order to accomplish that, we provide the following features. We have edge by edge migration. So we believe that a service should not require a leap of faith while onboarding air mesh it should be able to migrate each of its inbound and outbound edges one by one. And for those critical edges, we support percentage-based traffic shifting from a smart stack to air mesh. This allows side-by-side -side comparison of error rates and latency. And in case anything goes wrong, we want a traffic to be able to roll back quickly within a second. And here's how traffic shifting work. First, we run the Istio um, proxy alongside with the smart stack sidecar in shadow mode. Uh, we then configure Istio proxy to intercept traffic going to the reserved side range for the new service mesh. And then we also add the traffic shifting capability into Airbnb standard client frameworks. Um, after that, to shift traffic from smart stack to air mesh, a service owner can simply increase the traffic percentage using our um, dynamic config system. And if anything happens, you just change back the traffic percentage to zero, and then um, in seconds, traffic will be routed back to smart stack. And as traffic is being ramped up, um, service owner have access to uh, this migration dashboard, tracking the changes in error rate and latency. For those critical services, we normally gradually ramp up traffic to uh, 50%, 50% and leave it overnight to have uh, a side-by-side -side comparison to make sure there is um, no regression. 
And also during gradual rollout, we can uh, monitor ECU uh, sidecar resource usage and uh, um, adjust the CPU and memory um, during the process to uh, avoid um, like CPU throttling and OM issues. Yeah, that's all I want to cover. And I will hand over to Edie to talk about the other two strategies we have. Thanks, Ying, for introducing how user-friendly and uh, safe our migration is. So I'm Edi. So now I will show you further how we make the migration fast and transparent. Our migration scale is very huge. We have tons of service to migrate. On Kubernetes, we have around 100 clusters and more than 1,000 of Kubernetes services. Besides, there are hundreds of legacy EC2 service and more than 1,000 of external, in, uh, ser external service incidents. What's worse, the number keeps growing. So at the meantime, we are planning for the migration. There are tens of new service created just in a few weeks. So a good migration plan and speed really matter a lot for us. Otherwise, the migration will just become endless. So first of all, we realized that we need to stop bleeding. We integrated Airbnb infrastructure to opt in air mesh by default on the very first day and provide tooling to generate air mesh configurations for the new service. All these toolings are seamlessly integrated with the existing Airbnb development environment so that new service will just onboard air mesh transparently. As we all know, Rome wasn't built in a day. The transition period of migration can be very messy. So we provide full compatibility for a service to be in dual mode. That is while being on air mesh, the services can still fall back to communicate via legacy smart stack. So that without stopping the service development, we are pushing all the service to onboard air mesh still. Last but not least, education is very important. We have our doc portal and we'll create a code lab for all Airbnb engineers to get familiar with air mesh smoothly. Next, next let's take a look, closer look at how does our migration process look like. So we simplify the migration process into two steps. So giving a service, the first step to onboard air mesh is to migrate the service. After this step, the service will be considered as air mesh ready. That is the service is registered in air mesh control plan and the service is able to communicate with another air mesh ready service. Once the service is air mesh ready, we are able to migrate the edge for it. That means we will migrate the edge from this service to another service to be able to communicate on air mesh. When all the inbound and outbound edges of a service are migrated, we consider this service as air mesh complete. You might be asking, why does these two phases matter? Then let me show you a concrete example how exactly we speed up the migration process with this setup. Suppose we have a service A to be migrated and it has one outbound edge to service B and one inbound edge from service C. Now, if we start the migration, naturally we will start to migrate service A first to make it air mesh ready. But in order to migrate uh, the edge to service B, we also need to migrate service speed so that they can communicate with each other on air mesh. And finally, we can migrate the edge between A and B. In order to make service A air mesh complete, we will need to do the same thing again and again to all of its outbound and inbound edges. That is, we need to also migrate service C to be air mesh ready and then migrate the edge between them. So as you can see, this process can be very long and entangled if we make the step depends on one another and so on. So we clearly define each step to be independent. So we can easily pipeline the whole process as you can see from this graph. We just migrate all services to be air mesh ready first in parallel. This will just pave the way for migrating any edges for any services. By pipelining, we greatly accelerate the migration speed as well as avoid many process complexities. This pipeline approach also allows us to use a white glove approach and utilize the econ economy of a scale better. 
as we make the migration process repeatable and with the help from contractors, we achieve a high speed of migrating more than 40 services per, per week. And in this short quarter, we have tens of edges being migrated in parallel every day. As of today, there are more than 50% traffic on air mesh already. Speed is not enough. We also want to make the migration process transparent. The most representative solution is that we automate the, this uh, migration process whenever it's applicable in each step. We provide the tooling from migrating the cluster to automatically generating and updating the air mesh configurations. For example, to migrate an age on air mesh, we have the tooling to automatically detect the dependencies of a service. As you can see from the screen, it prompts out all the air mesh ready dependencies for client A to be migrated. Once you pick the dependency, it will generate everything needed for you. For example, it will add server A as the dependent service into client A's configuration and add client A into service A's allow list. Besides, Edge migration can be risky and everyone makes mistakes. So to avoid any misconfiguration, we also have the tooling to validate the edge beforehand. This helps us to make sure the edge is 100% accessible before actually shifting the traffic. And, and if there are errors, it will diagnose and give suggestion how to fix it. With all this migration tooling, not, not only we make our migration faster and safer, but also it's more transparent that service owners barely need to know anything about air mesh migration. The behavior stays unchanged. It just works with a minimum of configuration changes, which are automatically generated. So now here, uh, let's, uh, let me uh, sh uh, show you some recap for our migration. So first we provide a simplified and opin opinionated API. Second, we adopt gradual rollout and side-by-side -side monitoring for a safe migration. Third, we onboard new services to stop bleeding and pipeline the migration process to speed up. Finally, we make automation whenever available. So that's all about this, uh, our migration. And thanks everyone for listening. Uh, by the way, Airbnb is hiring. Please check out our website for open positions. Thank you.